Hello everyone, we will continue the topic file handling and in this video, we will cover two important transaction codes. What are those two transaction codes? CG3Y and CG3Z transaction codes. SAP provided these two transaction codes and what is the purpose of these two transaction codes? The purpose of CG3Y is to download a file from the application server to the presentation server. We all know very well. What do you mean by what do you mean by application server? Application server means we have a file in AL11 directory. We will simply download to presentation server. Treasury server means on our local desktop itself. So with the help of CG3Y, we will download a file which is in AL11 directory to our local desktop. Now, with the help of CG3Z, we will upload the file from the presentation server to application server. It means there is a file on our local desktop. We will simply upload into AL11 directory. So this is the purpose of these two transaction codes. The purpose of CG3Y is to download the file. The purpose of CG3Z is to upload the file. Now the question is in everyone mind. If SAP has provided these two transaction codes, then why we are writing GUI upload, GUI download, open data set, close data set. Why we are going for all these statements? See, with the help of these two transaction codes or in these two transaction codes, there is no provision of code. You cannot write your own logic. If you have a requirement or customer has a requirement that while uploading or while downloading, this needs to be done with this data. At that time, you need to write the code. If you have to write the code, then you need to use GUI upload, GUI download, open data set, close data set, because you need to write a program. In the program, you need to write the code. But yes, if there is no requirement of code, nothing, you can directly upload or you can directly download, then at that time you can use these two transaction codes. And many times, yes, suppose if you have a simple, simple, you have a file in AL11 directory, you want on your local desktop and no logic is required. Use this transaction code, very useful at that point of time. Suppose you have a file on your local desktop, you want in AL11 directory, but nothing, no code required, you want the data as it is. Then at that time, use this transaction code, very useful at that point of time. But if your requirement from the customer is, you need to write the code, data should come in this format, or you need to go for some operations on the data, then at that time, you cannot use these two transaction code because you need to create program. You need to write the code at that point of time. Now, what we will do, we'll go for the system and we will see how we can use these two transaction codes. So firstly, we will upload a file from the presentation server to application server. It means we will create a file on our local desktop. With the help of this transaction code, we will upload into AL11 directory. Suppose I will create a file on my local desktop. This is my local desktop. Suppose I am creating a notepad document. Suppose I am writing EMP data. The name of the file is EMP data. Suppose I am simply going for, suppose employee ID 1, suppose I am going for some name, suppose my name is Rahul, suppose employee ID 2, suppose I will go for Sedu, employee ID 3, suppose name Akanksha, 
employee ID four name Shirali. Suppose employee ID five name Abhishek. I will simply save. So now this file is on my local desktop presentation server. Yes. Now we will simply upload in AL11 directory. So what I will do, I will go for this transaction code CG3Z. So I will go to CG3Z. Now, now description itself is upload file. Where is your source file and where is your where you want to go for target? It is clearly saying source file on front end. Front end means what? My local desktop itself and target file on application server because we want to store into application server. So I will simply go for this F for help. You can pass manually also. It is totally your wish. I will just choose text because I have a text file. Yes, this is my text file employee data. So this is my source file. You can pass this path manually also. It is totally your wish. Now we will give the path of application server because you want to store into application server directory. So I will go to AL11 transaction code and we will see. It will store into which particular directory. This is AL11 transaction code. Suppose I will store into TMP. Control Y, Control C. Suppose it will go into slash TMP directory and name of the file as it is employee data. So you can clearly understand this is our presentations. Our file is on the presentation server and we are uploading into application server. Yes, because we want the data as it is. So we can use this shortcut of this transaction code. So now I will simply, simply go for upload. Yes, I want to go for allow. So it is saying yes, file transfer. If we will check in AL11 directory, this is our slash TMP. Now, if I will filter on last change, I will choose today's date. This is our 15th. I'll go for OK. Now you can see we have this EMP data. If I will double click, now you can see we have five hash is coming because I put tab in the file because you all know in SAP tab is equal to hash, tabulator is equal to hash. Suppose I'm putting one more record into the file. Suppose I'm going for employee ID six. Suppose I'm going for some name. Suppose I'm putting Amit. I'm saving. Now I have six records. Suppose if I'm using this feature now, now if I will go for simply upload, system will give me the warning information message that this file is already in the directory. Do you want to override? I can go for yes. Then system will simply, simply override. Suppose while uploading this, if I will select this checkbox, then system will not give the information message. It will simply, simply override. So if you select this particular checkbox, system will not give the warning message or pop-up message. It will simply overwrite. But if you are not selecting this checkbox, then system will give you a warning or information. Do you want to overwrite or not? Yes. Suppose if I will simply go for overwrite, if I will go for OK, now I will not get a pop-up message. Done. Now we will see. Now the file has six records. If I will go to back, if I will go to EMP data, you can see we have six records. So this is the way we uploaded the file from the presentation server to the application server. But yes, we are able to use this transaction code because we went for a perception that nothing needs to be done with the data. Whatever the data is there, we want as it is in application server directory. So we simply use this transaction code. If we want to do some calculation, if we want to write some code based upon this data, 
then I cannot use this transaction code. I need to create a program. I need to write the logic there. Yes. Now we will simply, simply go to next transaction code. CG3Y. CG3Y is to download a file from the application server to the presentation server. It means there is a file in, in the application server directory we will download on our local desktop. So now I will go to CG3Y transaction code. Suppose CG3Y. You will understand by the pop-up itself, it's download. Now the source file is on application server. Yes, our source file is AL11 directory. Suppose we'll take some file, which is in AL11 directory. Suppose in the same directory slash DMP, we'll take a file. You can download same file also. Just now EMP data we uploaded. You can download same file. I will just go for OK. Suppose header data. OK, we will download this particular file. You can download this EMP data. No problem. Yes. Suppose I will go for this. So how I will write? What is the path slash DMP slash? What is the name of the file? Header.txt. I'll put in capital H because it is in capital H, header.txt. Now I will give the target file on front end. You can see now target is on my presentation server on my local desktop. So I will simply go to F for help. I will choose. Suppose I will go for text. Okay. Suppose we'll go for this. Okay. I will just, we will not overwrite. I will manually give so that it will not overwrite my existing data. I will just check the properties. I am mean, giving this manually. Suppose this is the full path. Suppose it will go like basic data dot txt. Why I, I am giving different name? Because I do not want to overwrite this. Okay. That's why. Now, I will simply, simply go to this. I'll just go to the transaction code. Where we have this download. This is upload. Where is our download transaction code? I think by mistake I closed. Okay. I'll just open again. CG3 by yes, I think by mistake I closed this slash TMP slash header dot txt h is in capital. Now I will give the path of my presentation, sir. Yes, basic date. Now we will simply, simply down. Now you can see this data is downloaded. Now if I will simply refresh and we will see my local desktop, we have basic data. Now you can see we have two records. If I will show you this application server, we have two records, yes. Hash is there. Here you can see we have tab in each and every column. We have tab, we have tab. In SAP, it was hash while downloading. Yes, it is hash only. It is tab between the columns. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we covered two important transaction codes. Yes, in interview, yes, generally they ask this question, have you used CG3Y and CG3Z transaction codes? Yes, the purpose of CG3Y is to download the file from the application server to presentation server. Application server means 
you have a file in AL11 directory, you can simply, simply download on your local desktop. With the help of CG3Z, you can upload a file from the presentation server to application server. Means you have a file on your local desktop, you can upload in AL11 directory. Then we did the practical. Firstly, we simply uploaded the file using CG3Z. Then we simply, simply downloaded using CG3 file. Whenever you are using this transaction code, you have a pop-up of override. You have a checkbox of override. If you select that checkbox, system will simply, simply override if the file is, if the file exists with the same name. If you are not selecting that checkbox, then system will give you a pop-up message. Do you want to overwrite or not? While downloading the file, yes, I gave that different name because I do not want to overwrite my existing data. You can simply, simply override also. It's totally your wish. Now, the last important points, because now many people will get confused. In the last so many videos, we did so many practical, we have written so many logic. If this functionality is given by SAP, why we are not directly using it? See, in the projects, you always have a requirement to do something custom. Where you need to write the code, where you need to do something with the data. At that time, you need to compulsory write the code. Yes, you are achieving your requirement by writing the logic. In this transaction code, there is no provision of logic at all. Yes. So whenever your requirement is achieved or your requirement requires some logic, you cannot use this transaction code. But yes, sometimes it's very useful. Suppose if we have a file we on my tech, we want on my desktop. I can use this transaction code. Suppose I have a file on my local PC. I want in AL11 directory as it is without any logic. Then I can use this particular transaction code. This is all about our CG3Y and CG3Z transaction codes. So that's it in this video. Thank you.